First of all, welcome everybody here. Um, we have many uh, mayors, and uh, <clears throat> rather than uh, take a half an hour to introduce them all and the politicians, uh, I would just like to say welcome, and we really appreciate your coming. But I would be remiss if I did not uh, introduce, uh, because he's here somewhere, uh, Premier David Allward, who is the chairman of the Board of uh, Council of Governors of iCanada, and Premier Allward has arrived, in fact, uh, with some colleagues as well. David, we really appreciate you being here. <clears throat> you know, when you're the Premier of one of the most innovative uh, provinces in Canada that has built a great reputation, <clears throat> and a couple of guys come along and say, you know, we're, we're, we're going to create this organization, how would you like to chair our Council of Governors? you really might want to think twice about, geez, which way are these guys going and what's going to happen? And, you know, we already have a good reputation here. And so he put his name on the line, and uh, we have sure appreciated it. Because uh, the fact that Premier Allward is, uh, is involved, um, uh, just the fact that he's involved has attracted uh, uh, many uh, well-known uh, leaders. In fact, probably the most innovative mayors in Canada are part uh, here, and I see them in the room and uh, many CEOs as well that are leading very important initiatives. So, uh, Premier Allward, it's been a real pleasure and uh, great to have you here today as well. Um, so let me just get going. We have a, uh, I always call it a Barry Gander agenda. Barry's got more energy than 20 of us put together. And, uh, and so he creates agendas too, where you have to have a lot of energy to keep up. But everybody that leaves a conference that Barry has organized says, God, I got more information in that thing than I did in three other conferences. So, <laughs> so anyway, and he's done a tremendous amount of work as well. But we're going to move fairly quickly along today. And um, I'll just say a couple of words of introdu introduction to set the stage for the day. And then my other role is to uh, introduce our other dignitaries to get the program going. Um, the reason why we created iCanada a couple of years ago, it turns out, <clears throat> and uh, John Young, the chairman of the Intelligent Community Forum is here, and he'll be talking later, but if you look at the winners that have received the Intelligent Community of the Year Award over the last 13 years, inevitably, their economic uh, development growth rates are better than their neighbors, their employment growth rates, their social innovation, uh, their innovation indices are all higher than their neighbors. And it's not that they set out to create faster employment, they set out to create a strategy to be the world's leading intelligent community. And we've always punched above, above our weight in this area in Canada. We've had, uh, two, two years ago, we had three in the top seven. Uh, we've all generally had at least two from around the world in the top seven finalists. So we thought, you know what, um, why don't we take advantage of that and rather than wandering around Ottawa all the time with our placard saying we should innovate more, and then we all go home and nothing happens, and we should have a digital economy plan and nothing happens. So, um, so we said, <clears throat> let's create a movement. And that was the idea behind iCanada, because if you can have enough cities and towns and communities all winning the awards, and think of iCanada as the on-ramp for the Intelligent Community Forum uh, awards and competitions, then a rising tide raises all ships. And all of a sudden, Canada becomes a really intelligent nation, and we turn these numbers around. So that was the idea, and uh, it's just tremendous. You'll hear the program during today. You'll hear from people all across Canada that are involved. It's become much more of a regional initiative, and it's at the local areas where it all happens, as we know. So that's the point. I just want to make one more point before I do that, and Eileen cuts me off. The, um, I just got an urgent message on my BlackBerry from Christina Werner. Christina, are you here yet? She's coming, I think. Anyway, here's the fast notice. Canada comes in at number 32, just announced, on the International Telecommunications Union Information and Communication Development Index, number 32. So uh, we've just dropped a whole bunch again. Um, so one of the main things that we want to be getting at uh, as we start to move forward, and the Council of Governors will address this this afternoon, is folks, we just can't keep on reading about how we're dropping and dropping and dropping. And so iCanada is at a point where it's probably the natural body 
to lead the creation of a coalition to solve this problem. And it's not about let's get Bell or let's get Rogers. It's about we're all Canadians. We've all got to get in this and the federal government and get back to number one where we were in the 80s. So that's going to be something that I'm hoping is coming out of this meeting. And I just wanted to tell you that it just came out. Great way to start. So let me introduce our guests. No, I'm... Yes, yes. <laughs> Good, Bill. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to introduce Francois, but he's not here yet, I guess. So I'm going to introduce... Does that mean I get twice the time? No, I just, <laughs> I just used up the extra time. I know you are. My longtime friend uh, for many, many years who's done an amazing job building CATA, and it continues to grow into all kinds of new areas, John Reed. Thanks, Bill. Uh, I bet you don't know the first time the word I Canada was used. I happen to know that. Oh. Because, uh, like Bill has given me three minutes, uh, three years ago I asked Bill to close our annual innovation gala and to give us a challenge. So three years ago, Bill, you, you closed the innovation gala. You talked about uh, some of the metrics uh, where we were declining in some, advancing in some. You spoke about concern of the broadband rankings. You talked about uh, the need for leadership. You also said we should be focusing on the cities, the communities, and we should propel them to number one. We should have more international, first-class, digitally-enabled cities. And that was three years ago, and then you used the word iCanada. So when you look at the agenda and you see the people, I think you should be feeling pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of anyone more deserving than a, a Jubilee medal than uh, tonight when you will be receiving one. I, I, I I think your work has been outstanding, and I think this is the sort of thing that we should recognize by all communities and by the nation. So congratulations, and thank you for your dedication. Well, thank you, John. Thank you. I'm spending a lot of time in Russia, so we always clap for the audience, too. <laughs> now, before uh, Bill had his three minutes at uh, our Innovation Gala, he, he, he took longer than three minutes, uh, but the message is uh, stuck. Earlier that year, and Barry's here, he, he will remember this, Cata uh, coined the word Bedouin office. And I remember uh, we did a couple of things. So we merged Cata with the university community because thought leadership is so important. You really can't be credible unless you support it by good research. And we thought the business model for the trade association was very symbiotic with the university community. We're actually housed in the university. We do a lot of work with research chairs. When we say things, uh, we're very much seen as a trusted source because we take the time to do that diligence. Now, the Bedouin comment was a little more complicated. I don't know whether Fawn is here from IT World, but I had a call from one of her reporters, and I've known her for quite some time, and she said, John, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about, Bedouin office. Like, are your people going to be wandering the streets, uh, you know, looking for bread and water? Uh, you know, what do you mean, Bedouin office? Well, I said, well, that's really our passion about digital. I've given our people the mandate to look at every possible digital technology and embrace it as part of our operating model to be more efficient, to be number one. And they did it. And our, our team is here today, and I, I congratulate them. Suddenly, our, our, our long-distance bills became profit centers. Suddenly, servers were gone. But we, we, we embraced the cloud. And I know the IBM people were happy because they called me up because they said, John, you, you, you really get it. And this is like four years ago. Uh, and, and, and hence, it doesn't surprise me that we quickly started to work with IBM on, on smart cities. Now, when you embrace digital technology, you also get involved in other things that people don't really understand at the time. Twitter. Well, people looked at me and said, Twitter, why are you even bothering, bothering about Twitter? What's that all about? Well, I was very excited setting Twitter up for Cata, I don't know, three, three and a half years ago. And I waited and waited, and I got my first follower. I was very excited. So I did my research on our first follower because I didn't know much about the company. I certainly didn't know much about the executive. And then the, the company of the Twitterer follower, Cat's first Twitter follower, we, we really liked what his CIO was doing. Well, they, they then won the CIO award that we presented at the Innovation Gala. 
We then got involved with the food bank uh, at the end of the year, and, and uh, they needed bread. So I sent a message to my first Twitter follower and said, I know you're socially conscious. We've got a group that needs some bread. So two weeks later, through the social media, I get a call from the food bank saying, we got a call, and we now have bread. And that first Twitter, Twitter follower, who eventually became an iCanada sponsor, one of the first, was Peter Aceto from uh, Ing Direct. So Peter, uh, I think we're a case study on the power of, uh, of digital power, and a bit of a, an insight into how important adopting some of these new tools are. So we're passionate about iCanada, we're passionate about leadership, we're passionate about innovation, and I really feel we're in good hands when I look at the people out in the audience and I see what you're doing within your individual constituencies. So we certainly, we're on board with the mandate, anything we can do, Bill, to help you out, we will. And on that note, I will introduce uh, Karna Gupta from iTech. Karna. Good morning and thank you. Um, very pleased to be here, and uh, regrets from uh, Francois. He's tied up in WCIT. I just came from there. You know, as you can imagine, the uh, you know it's a three-day event, so he's kind of caught up in uh, doing the logistics. Um, very pleased to be here, and uh, welcome to Montreal to all of you, uh, people who are from out of town. Uh, I grew up in this town probably about 30 years ago. I lived here probably three blocks away. I went to school 10 blocks away. So it's my hometown, but I left it a long time ago, about 20 years ago. Happy to be back and hosting the WCIT here. Let me just talk about, uh, I got into ITAC probably about a year ago, after 35 years uh, in private sector. And as I come into ITAC, you know, I'm just going to introduce ITAC, what we're trying to do. It is an organization that's been around for 60 years and done some credible work, uh, like any other association has done, no different. And as we look forward, there's really three things we're focusing on. And I think uh, one, one is the working on a lot of the uh, policy and legislative arenas with both federal and provincial governments as it impact the technology sector. And you can imagine today, uh, globally, we're probably going through the most largest transformation history has ever seen. Things are moving a lot faster than it has done ever before. And you know, we all carry more computing power in our pocket than what I had on my desk 20 years ago. So when you look at the how fast things are changing in your car, in your house, whether you're talking smart grid, whether you're talking medical info, informatics, whether you're talking your uh, anything you use, it's all about ICT and information technology. So this, as we participate in this transformation, associations like ITAC and CARA and others, they, they have a role to play. And we looked at it as from a three fundamental areas. One is the working on the legislative and policy issues. Second, working with both the private and public sector to move towards a greater use of technology in delivering services. And the, and the point that was just brought up, why Canada is slipping? We are most connected nation, but we don't use our technology effectively to do what we need to do. The e-commerce numbers are woefully low. Our talent and skill growth is still s struggling. So there are a bunch of issues that play into the, the environment that is not allowing us to grow. So we're working with the both public and private sector to use and increase the use and adoption of technology. The third thing we're trying to do is promote Canadian technology, not only locally but globally. And when I talk Canadian technology, it's not indigenous to Canada. It's about multinationals that are doing a lot of innovations here. A lot of multinationals. Pat is here from IBM. And... Uh, significant amount of innovation that goes into the country, and all of these companies are, are fighting hard to keep the top jobs in this country uh, when they compete with their peers globally. And it is very important that we create the environment and ecosystem that allows them to be successful. So that's kind of the three things we're focusing on. In, in terms of uh, you know, the, the what's happening in Montreal over the next three days, and that's where I'll spend some, some comments on now, uh, and I think I, most of you, or a lot of you, would probably go to WCIT over next uh, next three days that's taking place in Palais de Congrès, and uh, you'll see a world-class event unfold. 
We took on that event probably about four years ago, and what you'll have over the next three days is probably coming together of some very significant uh, thought leaders in the world. You'll have uh, government leaders. Uh, Governor General will open the session. You'd have business executives and business leaders. You'd have academia and thought leaders from various think tanks. And the discourse that will take place, I want you to all to participate in it because it is very important we engage in that discussion. Just as a uh, background to it, you should, if you didn't know, in June we ran an online virtual forum worldwide. And the participation in that forum was 11,000 people, 84 countries, and it was done on IBM's uh, platform uh, and technology. And, and this global jam has generated a rich, robust input of global issues relative to health care, government services, smart cities, you name any of the areas, and we have a data. That data forms the, the discussion that will take place over the next three days in WCIT. So I know uh, Bourgeon, and uh, welcome to Montreal, and uh, you know, enjoy the next three days, and I'll, I'll, I'll regrets from Francois, and you know, he, he couldn't be here because he's tied up in the WCIT event. Uh, thanks again, and I'll pass it on to John. I want to uh, <clears throat> as uh, 